breakout sessions so that those who miss this uh, event can join us as well later virtually. So my name is Elaine Prattley. I'm one of the Rotary Peace Fellows uh, involved in uh, organizing events in the Asia Oceania region. And I'm also involved with the Global Peace Conference, the first one, as well as the coming one next year. So today's event is uh, hosted by the Rotary Peace Fellow Alumni Association. And we have Jackie and Verena hosting this session, plus their gang of five <laughs> or six people facilitating. And I'll let, uh, let Jackie and Verena introduce them. Uh, we want to welcome you from, from wherever you are joining us. If you haven't done so, please note where you are based so that we can also know where everyone is. Also, please feel free to put um, introduce yourself in the chat box. And if you have any questions, I'm sure the host will be happy for you to put questions in the, in the chat box. There will be an interactive session today, so feel free to start warming up. I'm sure they'll be very glad if you start shaking and warming yourself up. So um, feel free to send me a message or if anyone wants to ask a question but prefers me to ask in your place, feel free to do that as well. So I'll hand the session over to Jackie. Thank you. Thank you, Lane. Um, so welcome, everybody. Thank you very much for um, joining us today. Um, oh, there you go. Thanks, Tifa. Um, so I'll let Verena introduce our team and then we'll um, go through um, the session. So as Elaine said, we're going to have a very um, interactive session. And the core part of, I think, this um, workshop is using drama and certain things around drama and how we could use that to um, understand GBV. But I think certain components within it are important because they can be used or they're transferable within context um, or, uh, to, to mediate peace and, and understanding. So I hope that some of the things that we do demonstrate or that you do experience are useful. And yes, I do encourage you to ask any questions and any thoughts you might have. Please feel free to share them with us. <clears throat> uh, Verena, would you like to introduce our team? Thanks. Sure. So perhaps we're going to introduce us. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so I'm Verena. Uh, I work with Jackie at Queensland University of Technology. <laughs> and um, well, I've been convert converted to <coughs> drama. I guess I'm more into, I guess, come from a background of documentary filmmaking, but I have found the drama process is incredibly useful in terms of understanding context and story. So um, that's where I'm coming from. We both work across Australia and Papua New Guinea and the wider <coughs> Pacific. Um, so we will be using examples from Papua New Guinea today. Do you want to add anything more to your? <laughs> to my um, my, yes. <laughs> so um, as Rena said, my, my field is in drama, applied drama or theater, community theater. And um, the ways in which we use the sort of creativity and the art forms to understand people, but also to bring about different ways of thinking about things. So that's uh, my background, my field. Um, yeah, and I hope that Tim, we can get a lot more out of this uh, as we move along. Thank you. Um, maybe we introduce the rest, Rina? Yes, so um, in our work, I guess, with many of you as well, we, we get to be fortunate to work with a lot of great and creative people. So we asked a few to join us today to help <laughs> facilitate the session. Um, because for us it's also, you know, we're also as we're adapting to these online tools, and as you can imagine, drama processes are usually very physical and, you know, it's about embodiment and <laughs> doing things together. So bear with us as we're trying to do things online today. Um, so um, we've asked Tifa uh, to be the host of the session today. Uh, as you, um, as I call your name, please wave. Uh, so Tifa is helping us to facilitate the technology today. Um, she's a lecturer and sound designer at Queensland University Technology. So we are, will be experimenting with a few collaborative online tools today. So um, Tifa is running the session. We have Kayla um, with us. Kayla works with us on projects and finished her degree at QUT and Drama, a former student of Jackie's. Hi, Kayla, if you can wave. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we have Bomai. He's a PhD student. Um, 
and originally from Papua New Guinea, but currently based in Brisbane. And he does his work around sorcery accusation related violence in a community in Highlands and around tribal approaches to peace building. Thanks, Bomai, for joining us. And we have Elias and Umba both joining us from Goroka in Papua New Guinea. And both of them are working very closely um, in our team with community groups to facilitate um, processes around trauma and um, in particular currently working with university students around um, uh, discussing the law and uh, conflict resolution mechanisms in PNG. So thanks a lot everybody um, for joining us um, to the facilitation team and to everybody that's um, part of this um, session. <clears throat> so perhaps we start. Uh, Tipa, shall we move to the next slide? Yeah, and thanks. we're trying as good as we can to catch up with the chat as well, where you guys are introducing yourselves as well. And uh, please, for those other for other facilitators or the hosts, if there's anything that um, has been asked and we are not addressing, give us a buzz or um, mute us or something, <laughs> so we are aware. Thanks. thanks. So one of the things and the key things that we do within the work um, is that we we think that we understand that you know, the power to change lies within communities and within groups of people, but that essentially that power is there. And that the answers that we need also lie within communities. And that communities can work out for themselves what needs to change and what needs to be done. And so with that um, sort of thinking, we work into communities. And we understand that there are a lot of different things that happen, um, but that are there, but we do want to, or every time we go into a place, we try to understand the context and the ways in which working, but understand there is always difficulties in the way that we work through these things. We, we use the arts and the arts-based processes. Um, maybe we can go, yeah. Tifa, sorry, Tifa, is it possible for me to take control? Oh, yep, there you go. So Wait, one of the things, next yeah, the next slide. So one of the things that we do um, work with is to work with drama and the arts. And a little bit of a difference within the drama and the arts, and maybe most of you are familiar with drama and, and, and theater. And for us, there is, a demo, uh, there is a difference between them, but they're also interrelated. So drama, we focus on process and the different ways of working with. Theatre is like the product, the theatre, the ones that you go and you watch already the performances. But the important part that we draw from is process drama and the use and the, create, and the exercises that you use to understand various different things. And there are key people in the field uh, that we draw on in order to um, do this work. And one of them, and one of the founders of it is Hefket and Bolton. And they started off with a drama and education, but about student-centered learning. The importance of understanding that students are absolutely, that students understood where they were, that you needed to talk to them and have a collaborative processes in terms, in terms of understanding for, for, for the learning to happen. There was Neil and Goodland, they talked about the different conventions and the different forms that frame the stories and therefore using that to understand the context to which you work in. And those are the different kinds of frames and um, activities I will, that we would use in order to understand different things. One of the first people to talk about process drama, the work that we, I draw on or we draw on, is called Brad, uh, is, um, Brad Hazeman, and he termed the process. But one of the distinct forms about it was that it was about improvisation and learning to draw on the different ways of working within a particular space. And info, improvisation was useful in that sense. And then... Um, also key to this um, idea about process um, was that you could work within the improvisation, but understand that working within that and working within the role play, there were certain things that you could draw from that were unstructured, but at the same time they were structured. And so when we do a process drama within the practice, the key part about it is that the drama formed a different kind of dramatic experience. That understanding how to use these forms you would um, structure a workshop to address the various different issues. And the issue that, you know, it, it depended on whatever the issue was. And for us and for the workshop that we're doing now is around understanding the various structural inequalities that exacerbate sort of gender-based violence and socially related violence within communities. And that's how we use the drama process and we'll experience some of them. One of the key things again is called the leaderly led drama. And this one I think is important in some of the things that we do. That while something is structured, often certain things come about. And it's important to notice that. 
And so people, and, and within that, there's ideas and knowledge that come about. But as a leaderly process, while you might have a workshop that is structured in a particular way, to be also open to the possibilities and the nuances that emerge from that. And how then do you weave that back into it again? Because it deepens our understanding. And in that particular moment, you understand the various different things that are happening from it. And so those were like the key things around process drama. So going back to gender and gender-based violence, which is the theme and the hook for this particular um, um, experiential learning that we're going to go through, um, gender-based violence in Papua New Guinea is very high, it's highly it's prevalent. And so when the statistics are right, two out of every three women face gender-based violence in Papua New Guinea. But on top of that as well, two sorcery and sorcery accusations um, affects um, the community. And in the work that we do, we also use the various different drama forms and, and, and other media um, components to actually think about the different ways of, of understanding how um, accusations come about in communities. And so these so in order to understand these ones and to address the issues and, and also, I mean, donors and government partners are also very much part of this. For sorcery and sorcery related violence in particular, one of the most pressing issues that came about, a scenario that came was in 2013, there was the death of a, a woman, and maybe some of you would have heard about it, was that they burned a woman alive that was accused of sorcery, and this, her name was Leniata Kapari. And this brought the whole nation to a standstill, and this came about, it wasn't just a one-off incident. There was a collection of incidents that happened, and this one just tipped the, uh, it was a tipping point for the country. And so what happened was that then the whole country came to a standstill, and then laws were put into place. And then there was a huge civil rights movement that actually created the change for that. So I think on the backdrop of that and the work that we're doing, then we introduce like, um, the work that we're doing around gender and gender-based violence as well. Um, and how then can we go about this using the various different forms, but also the um, media. But before that, I think a little bit of a background on gender and gender in, in the Pacific. And I think it's always complicated to look at gender anywhere. And because PNG is a very tight-knit, interconnected, social, relational place, to, to speak to the individual to create change is really difficult because gender is socially constructed and it is linked to um, the different um, social and relationships that happen within community and customs and traditions get implicated in, in that. And so it's really, really difficult um, to, to, to address gender-based violence when you're talking about a human rights-led approach and how then do you address that? But so how do you take those sort of things into consideration? And so power and agency as well too is, you know, we need to understand those various different powers and agencies so that we can address um, the issue. Do you want to talk about um, a couple of those ones then. <laughs> well, I think that you know we're talking about the role of trauma and peace building and conflict resolution, and we're going to focus on on gender and gender relations. However, we know that in in different circumstances, gender based violence um, is exacerbated by conflict. And so, when we look at the issue of gender based violence, in particular sorcery accusations, we often look at the community conflicts and the community relations and also the community support networks that uh, we need to or we can tap into and community um, and the drama processes allow us to identify some of those networks and relations so that's why we wanted to preface this relational nature of of the issue and how drama processes can um, allow us to understand these relationships a little bit better. What we've also found in our work is uh, because we've been working with human rights defenders, that uh, we've worked with a lot of women who've been crucial to conflict resolution and peace mediation processes. So we will talk and share, um, I think, one of their stories today. Um, and we can move to the next slide. So that is just that um, in our work, um, working with these trauma processes has allowed us to identify the nuances of these community-led innovations and conflict resolution processes. Um, and that is in the context of um, human rights, but also gender-based violence and sorcery accusation related violence. Uh, yeah. 
And so one of the human rights defenders that will be sharing her work, but we will also be using her as a, a stimulus, as one of the exercises that we will use to unpack the various different ways in which we could experience and understand um, gender and gender-based violence, but also the components that we're talking about now, which is um, the structural inequalities and the various different things um, that happened. And her name is um, Mary Kinney. And I think we'll show, show, share a little bit about her story and then we will um, talk some more about um, um, the experiences that she's had and what are the different kinds of ways in which we could understand it better. Tifa, should we um, play her, her story? Thanks. So this is a digital story. It's about five minutes long and we'll use her story as a, a way to unpack some of the ideas and have some participatory exercises. Yeah, for this, I think we might um, allow everybody to watch it independently via the link I'm going to put in the chat um, because it seems to work better if everybody opens it directly um, and views it from there rather than trying to stream via Zoom in case we get delay and that sort of thing. So I've just popped the little Vimeo link in your chat um, and if you'd like to open that, you can see the link. Um, and I think I've just got to check how long that movie is. It's approximately Rena, do you know five uh, six minutes six minutes so can everybody give me a thumbs up when you've got that link open um, and then we'll probably uh, just give the links in the chat the Vimeo um, when you've got it open give me a little thumbs up and I'll start a, about a six minute timer while everybody gets starts that video together it's kind of like a watch along is that okay with everyone how's everyone else doing I've got a couple of thumbs up there Yep, great. And let's see if there's any other thumbs up in the because <coughs> there's two different ways of doing thumbs up. <sighs> yeah. Are we all doing okay? Yeah. Or if you'd like to turn your camera off when you've got it, that'd be great. Doing okay. Great. I've only got two people so far, so I'm feeling a little nervous about that. There's a couple more. Kayla, I can't tell you if it's frozen or not. <laughs> I got your thumbs, it's okay. Okay, yep. All right. I'm going to start the six minute timer. Are we all doing okay? Yeah, great. Okay, let's do that. So I'll see you all back in six minutes. Is that okay? If you want to, you can put your what you felt in the um, in in the chat, or if you want to as well, you can um, unmute or raise your hand and um, yeah. And then if if you can't unmute, then Tifa can unmute you. Uh, hi, this is Kamaini from India. Uh, I could actually really relate to the video because this is very much still prevalent in India. The whole issue of witchcraft. I mean. We do have a, a, a burning of women, but that is in the context of other dowry and all. But due to witchcraft, in fact, we are fighting to have a law. So there are certain areas in the country, in Orissa and Jharkhand, certain states, where this sorcery you call or the witchcraft, uh, you know, there is a lot of gender-based violence. So I could actually correlate with it very much. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for that. Yeah. Any other thoughts, uh, perhaps, on the, on the video? Um, and what you thought about it. Yeah. It's very well made. <laughs> <laughs> you know, in such a short time, in six minutes to tell the story, the whole story and also tell I mean, it's like her life from, uh, you know, a victim to a survivor to, to a human rights defender. And yeah. I, I think it's, it's really very well made. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for that. Yeah. I, yep, you go over it. Yeah. What we forgot to mention is that this, this was part of a, a digital storytelling exercise. So Mary took the photos herself. Um, <coughs> so that was part of this activity. Yeah. And I mean, we usually um, use it to... Um, 
as a starting point for conversations, I suppose, um, in terms of what uh, the impact of sorcery, sorcery related violence on, on, on women and on children and on families. Tifa, was that your hand up, was it? There is a little message in the chat, by the way, just to have a look at that. Somebody has uh, made a comment in the chat. Rukmini from Mumbai. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thanks a lot for that. Yes. So maybe we'll use this. Um, we'll go to the next um, slide, please, Tifa. And um, I think um, the next exercise requires for us to interact with the platform and to um, use. And is it an note? An note, um, uh, Tifa. An annotation. Annotation. Could so you just take in a, your as, yeah, you got sure. So in most of your Zoom applications, you can probably see a little more button which has three little dots on it. And if you click on it, it might allow you to see the word annotation. And so um, you should be able to annotate on your screen, except interestingly, I can't see that. Um, <laughs> uh oh. Um, I wonder if that hasn't been turned on in this. Um, version of uh, the program, <laughs> that may be a problem. Okay. Somebody, uh, yeah, <laughs> that may be missing. Okay, right. I'm gonna quickly go yep. and see how to turn it on, if that's the case. Yeah, I think so. It's in one of the advanced settings. Yeah, but while we're thinking about that um, and trying to practice that, uh, Tifa, can you just take us through to the next slide, please? Slide um, 11. Yeah. And so just let us know when you've, you found the, the button. Um, we wanted to do a little bit of an interactive session, but to think about Mary's story, but not about Mary's, just Mary. We want you to think about Mary's mother in this and what her mother might be feeling on the inside. Then I want you to think about the community and what the community is feeling towards Mary's mother. And as we've all seen um, the film, the short film, um, of course it is about Mary and the impact that it had on her, but um, perhaps we don't even consider Mary's mother's situation and how she might be feeling there. And I think that those are important things to also understand. If we're gonna understand the situation, those are the kinds of components as well too, that we try to get people to understand. So I want us to think about what Mary's mother is feeling and maybe jot down on the side or in the chat. And after that, uh, we can, if we find the interactive um, button, then we can also just write in the interactive session here about what Mary's mother is feeling. So I want you to take a minute just to reflect on it. Thinking about Mary's mother, what happened to her, and how she might be feeling given the situation that has happened to her. A minute to think about. Mary's mother and her feelings. Great. And please share it in the chat. Okay, good. And, yep, um, it's working now. Great. Okay. Tifa, can I we? Think that was, I Just think that you... was me, sorry. Okay, maybe Tifa, if you could transfer it in, but we go to the next slide, which is an empty shell. And then Mary's mother's feelings go inside the body. So anything that someone's perhaps posting, this is us exploring the online, the participatory interactive online tools. We are still learning about those and the features of Zoom. Um, so luckily we have Tifa. <laughs> um, so please continue to think about um, what she's feeling. Great. Yeah. Now I want us to move out of the space 
and think about how the community is feeling towards Mary's mother. And this is Mary's uh, community. So these are clans, these are tribes, and it doesn't matter whether it's in a PNG context, but you know, from where you are from as well too, think about that and how might a society view a person like Mary, uh, Mary's mother that has gone and left their child in this traumatic event that happened to Mary. And also in the context of the tribal fight that has happened and her husband, a warrior, um, being killed. How do people feel about um, Mary's mother in that context? And we will put this outside of the body um, form. Usually we facilitate this process uh, in a room with sticky notes where people can write on the sticky notes and then go step forward and post them uh, on a figure that we draw on a wall. Yeah. But uh, thank you Tifa and thank you everyone for your contributions. Yeah. And so we can now see um, the different feelings experienced here. And, and now, um, just to ask a question, when each of us is seeing all of this um, coming out, what are some things or some thoughts that come through when we're seeing how Mary's mother is feeling and how the community are feeling towards her? What are some of the things that you are feeling or what are some of the thoughts that you are thinking about when this is happening? Can we raise um, our hands or can we just answer? Yeah, please, you can answer. Sorry, I, there's no raise hand function, so I'll just go ahead. Um, hey everyone, my name is Noor, um, and I was born in Iraq, post the um, Iran-Iraq war, and the Kuwait-Iraq war. And um, I was a refugee for about 16 years of my life. And I think when I see this, it reminds me of my own circumstances, to where my own mother had to um, do immoral things to raise her kids and to uh, to just scavenge for for food or for shelter and it reminds me of how every country we went to refugees were always blamed for high prices and for other issues within the country so we basically had to keep and stay on the run because we can't stay in whatever country we're in every six months we had to get our new people work and that was an option kids couldn't go to school um you go down the neighborhood and you're the new kid on the block, you get picked on. So um, you definitely feel very dangerous. You feel in danger and even when you go to sleep, you feel like your friend. You don't know who's gonna come get you while you're sleeping. So it's pretty scary. Thanks for listening. Thanks. Thank you very much for thanks that. For sharing. Yeah, thanks for sharing. Are there any other thoughts uh, that come through when we're looking at this activity and seeing how Mary's mother is feeling on the other side and how um, uh, the community is feeling towards her and how she herself is feeling. Are there any other thoughts? I don't think we have a th um, the hand waving function on this one, so feel free to unmute and, and just speak. <laughs> yes, Kayla. Um, 
I think look, just looking at uh, what's happening internally and what's happening externally, there's a, there's a miscommunication that's happening between the community and what's happening with um, Mary's mother. Because Mary's mother, as us, we look at her and, and we, we're showing signs of empathy towards her. We're saying we think she would be afraid and worried and scared. But the community that is, was around her was being distrustful and not thinking about it that way. So seeing that there's a disconnect there, a miscommunication, and there are those narratives they might have about her, um, we can look at the situation and go, it's not quite as simple as they see it. We're, we're showing empathy towards her, but they are, they're not showing that in the same way. So we see that there's a miscommunication going on because of those narratives they perceive about her rather than what actually might be happening with her. Yeah, thanks, Ken. Um, yeah, and um, feel free, anybody, to jump in. And one of the reasons <clears throat> why we do this activity is, first of all, we never get to understand what is within and how a person is feeling. And sometimes when we run this activity, it varies from different groups of people because of the different experiences that they have. And, and oftentimes people think that, you know, it is the mother's fault. She went away, she left it, but she probably didn't have a choice. And we try to unpack that. But in terms of um, peace building and creating communities and deepening understanding towards it, one of the processes is first of all, to understand that tacit knowledge, those kind of prejudices that people have. And this is one of the ways in which we can tap into people's experiences and then try and unpack them. And so when people talk about, well, it's really her fault, you know, she should just go away. We don't really like her very much. It's like, well, there are various different reasons why that is happening. And so we try to create a conversation that enables people to understand the reasons why and not to take it from where it is now. And so, and this is just one of the activities that we use in terms of understanding that. And sometimes we take that and students go away with it or participants go away with it or local communities go away with it thinking, ah, oh, okay, stop, let's think about this some more. <clears throat> Did you want to add something, Brenda? No, just in terms of, I mean, this is uh, an, an activity we have done quite a bit around gender-based violence and how um, a survivor might be feeling or what that, that then how they might be tracked and but also how the different community members might be looking at the person so just i think there was another comment um yes uh i i sorry uh hi can i say something uh, yes yeah, absolutely. please hi hi my name is emily um, and I just wanted to really echo, is it Kayla? I really wanted to echo your words. I thought that was really good what you said, because I think this exercise does exactly what uh, you used the word, I think, just to stop. And it really helps everybody step into someone else's shoes and develop empathy for that moment mm -hmm. and hold that person's story with respect, but without judgment. And stopping and drawing boundaries around each person's kind of lens, if you will, I think can be incredibly enriching for this particular story or anyone's story that you're trying to unpack. So this, I really enjoyed this exercise. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Thanks. Thank you. And you Hi, summarized key components really well in terms of the empathy. And that's what we're trying to do within a group when we run this activity at the same time, provide a safe space because we're talking about those different emotions about this character based on this scenario yeah. and we've got Ellen yeah thank you um I think that what's happening too is that it's building a connection between the community mm -hmm. and the and feelings for both Mary and her mother so by seeing these these connecting feelings I think that there's more chance that that there'll be some kind of resolution or maybe some kind of they'll be left feeling maybe some kind of path to resolving these issues yeah yeah, thanks, Ellen. And, and and it's really difficult for some people when the 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 behaviour is so embedded to really dislike the mother, for example, and 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 it never. It's just the start of trying to have the conversation about it, and then you continue to go back again and do it. And sometimes you have such opposition about it because you know, oh, you know, it's not. Oh, yeah, because it's like this is my culture here. I don't want her here. She's not allowed to be here. And yet the person is human, and the empathy and the connection is always one of the things that we try to do within these exercises and these processes to get people to actually absolutely place one in, in, in somebody else's shoes. Mm -hmm. And so those are important things. <clears throat> yeah. Any other thoughts um, uh, that what people want to um, share? 
<coughs> um, cool. So we'll just move on to the, to the next activity. Um, thank you very much for that, everybody, and for the collection and, um, and for contributing your thoughts to that one. <laughs> Thanks all. So in our limited time, we'll run through two or three activities today. So the next activity will lead us to a breakout room um, that our facilitators will be part of. Um, so thank you, Tifa, for putting all these uh, words there. That, that's been really, really great. Yeah. Um, we hope in the future that we'll learn more about the annotation function so it can actually directly write onto the um, sheet as a participant. Um, so uh, thanks, Tifa. We'll go to the belongs. <clears throat> Uh, the one before, thanks. Yep. Great. So um, this might be similar in other countries as well. So this is, uh, these are billums from Papua New Guinea, handmade bags, and um, many women make them. And they are um, very popular. Everyone uses them, practical, pretty, all of those things. But they are an incredible strong metaphor um, for the community as well. For example, um, <coughs> young babies in the big woven billows, the babies will sleep, they will be carried in them. Um, and, but at the same time, women carry incredible burden. Um, those working um, very hard on a daily basis, carrying firewood, um, garden food, all those aspects also in billows. And they are a metaphor for both the, the family and the connection, the culture, um, but also, you know, can be used as perhaps a burden uh, or metaphor for a burden that a woman might carry on their shoulders. So um, we wanted to introduce, um, so the first activity was around the relationships of an individual and the feelings, the internal feelings, and then how the community feels. Here we wanted to introduce the idea of the symbol or metaphor and how we could use um, that in an activity. So um, we'll go to the next slide, Tifa. There are multiple ways we can use the metaphor. So one is that, let's say this is Mary's billum. Yeah. So, um, and in, in a workshop scenario, uh, we use the metaphor to replace the character itself um, to kind of for us to connect with the character. So as we are now experiencing the next activity, this is Mary's billum and we can talk to Mary through her billum. And um, when we go to the breakout rooms, another way of seeing it, we can also give things to Mary and we can put things into her billum. And these can be concepts and ideas, something that we all from our community can contribute to Mary. Mary as a young child who has just felt her mom leaving her community. What can we do to support Mary. And what we would like to do now is to move into the breakout rooms and the facilitators will take you through this activity where you will be taking on a character. And this is, can be, this is related to your cultural context, a character where you can support Mary in whatever way, by speaking to her, by showing her uh, something by giving her something into her billum. Um, so I'm going to leave the facilitators to uh, present this in the breakout room. It gives you a little bit of time to discuss your own backgrounds and to, to practice this activity. And um, then we'll come back and the facilitators will share with us or anyone nominated in the group that wants to perhaps briefly share the experience mm -hmm. in each of the groups. So I'll ask Tifa um, and you can ask if you have any questions, do ask it in your breakout rooms to facilitators. And I'll just ask Tifa uh, how many breakout rooms we have and um, if we have three, three currently. How many? Three. So one for Bomai, one for Kayla, and one for Elias and Amba. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. Great. And um, 
We will uh, give it about 15 minutes. Yep. Yeah. Okay, two seconds. I'll just set that up. Just give me a second. I'm going to give you a 15 minute timer and one minute out, you'll start seeing a countdown for the closing of that break, breakout room and everybody will be brought back in here, okay? Um, so everybody will automatically go to the breakout room now um, when you're ready. Cool, good to go. Thank you. Hi. Hello. 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 So we have to put stuff into the bag, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, we can think I'm uh, facilitating this system. Who is that? Yeah, so I think uh, we'll start by briefly introducing ourselves. And can I ask someone to record what we are discussing and report back to the facilitators? Anyone wants to volunteer for that? Okay, if not, I'll, uh, I'll do that. Okay, and then I will uh, move on to think about what we want to do or say to Mary so she can carry it. And then I will uh, report to the facilitators anyway. Uh, I'll uh, introduce myself. Uh, Boma Witness, my name. Uh, I'm currently doing my PhD at uh, Queensland University of Technology, and my research is uh, understanding sorcery acquisition related violence by investigating a uh, tribal experience in Papua New Guinea. Okay, I think that's it about me, and we'll move on. Elsa, would you like to briefly introduce yourself? Yeah, hi, I'm Elsa Pisilva. I'm based out of Mumbai, India. I'm a sexual Eric, may I put you on mute because there's an echo? So uh, I work on sexual and gender based violence, and I really found this very interesting. Um, you know, because it gives me some tools to work with survivors as well, to process and uh, deal with trauma. Florence? Hi, I'm Florence. I just finished um, my Rotary Peace Fellowship in Tokyo, Japan. Um, I was looking at business and human rights, so I, I don't necessarily have a background in gender-based violence or in Papua New Guinea or in drama and peace building or in trauma. Um, but, you know, here because I wanted to learn more about um, the many aspects of peace building and creative forms. Um, so I, it's been um, very interesting to kind of hear a lot of new information, especially about Papua New Guinea, about which I have have no um, background. So that's been very interesting. Okay, yeah, uh, can you quickly move on to uh, Prakash? Hello, I'm Colonel Prakash Tiwari. I served in the army for 27 years and served in conflict areas. Last um, 15, since the last 15 years, I'm there in the corporate world, I basically do infrastructure development project in conflict areas and try to bring about peace and development in these areas through these projects. Thank you. Okay, uh, quickly move on to Madhuri. Uh, hi, 
i am a lecturer in psychology uh, so uh, i joined here today just so that i could learn something new and i could uh, carry these lessons to the classroom all right uh, arik hi you still here with with echo no i can hear you clearly ah good good i just thought about moving to another computer uh okay so my name is i come from uh, israel i uh, i'm a peace fellow from uh, uq so i have deep feeling for australia <laughs> uh i'm i'm uh, i'm using oh this is me i'm doing the noise sorry for those sorry for those who are not uh, talking can put on mute am i I'm doing the Oh, okay. Can you hear me? Yes. <laughs> okay. Um I'm using the uh, Augusto Boal technique for many years. I'm mainly working with the Jews and Arab youth and also with uh, students in the um, uh, Western Galilee uh, college in Akko, which is the north part of Israel. uh i couldn't see the movie because i'm using an old computer i'm not at my house so i have to um hear from you what's going on <laughs> and to join in okay thank you is anyone still there who some, said something aditya yes uh, hello i am audible now yes yeah i am just i am aditya krishna from nagpur maharashtra i am just student in studying in engineering college like i have seen this uh, this topic in interesting so i took part in it thank you ah uh, thank you adit it's a long name okay uh now it's good to see uh us coming from different parts of the world and now let's see how or what we want to say or do to mary so she can uh, put in a bilom and take it away with her so who wants to start think uh, we'll make it short so i would like to give her hope um hope which she can um put into her belong and uh, take with her because i do believe that what she was going through at that moment in time was very traumatic but uh, you know there is hope like as a child uh, she didn't know what was going on with her but later she was able to identify that it was trauma and find the help that she needed but if somebody had told her at that point in time that you know you will be fine in the future it would have made her a little bit more comfortable in dealing with it i would also um, you know give her uh, maybe another dose of courage to face life given that her whole community was against her so these are intangible but yet i'd still put it in her the second i'm oh, sorry uh, hope and what else can, can anybody give me a short summary of the story because i couldn't see it i had a problem with my computer okay hope yeah and courage so the movie was about this young girl mary who lived in the highlands of papua new guinea in the tribal areas uh she was the first born and she was adopted by her father's brother because um they didn't have children and one day there was a tribal fight that broke out at the time her uh, father came to uh, means her stepfather came to stay um came to have lunch but because it was raining heavily he couldn't return to the men's house i assume in png the women stay in one house and the men stay in a separate house and uh, so he stayed the night in the women's house and the next day the tribal fight he went to fight with the rest of the man a uh, men 
Um, so the mother had prepared sweet potato, which this girl took with her to school. The father ate the sweet potato and then joined the other men in the tribal fight. And when this girl returned from home, from school home, she could only see smoke. And smoke meant that somebody had died. And it was her father who died in the fight, but he was mutilated very badly. And they, the community believed that this was bad luck because he slept in the women's home and he ate the sweet potato made by her mother. So they, the, they were so angry. So it was as though the mother would also be killed because that would be her punishment. So she just ran away and did not even say bye to the daughter, Mary. And um, Mary uh, said yes. since then she was sick. I mean, they lost everything. Um, her community took away all the plantation and the coffee um, plantation as well. And um, later in life, she realized that the sickness she experienced post this incident was trauma. Uh, and then she went on to become a human rights defender and to work on rights of women because um, all of this is linked to sorcery as well. So if I've missed anything, maybe the others can fill in the gaps. I think uh, you summed it uh, well. And what we're doing now is trying to say something or do something to Mary to encourage her. In, in that uh, situation, so she can uh, recollect a strength and live in the community. So my only also, thing, uh, but my only thing which I would like to give from my side is yes, the, is confidence. Is what is the way that we can build a confidence, build a self esteem, and uh, by doing certain acts, and that is what uh, uh, build her own capacity and capability, so that she's able to come up and deal with the situation. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, Arik? And I need to think about it a moment. I just heard the story, so I'll be with you in a minute. Okay. I'll go to uh, Florence. I would want to give her a book. I, I don't know what one, but some kind of, you know, fiction novel with a strong female character who has adventures, something where she could kind of see herself in a character and could draw her hope and courage and everything from that, from that book. Because I know when I was a child, I didn't have anything traumatic happen like with Mary, but I really, you know, I think most children often feel like kind of disconnected from other things around them. And I always like kind of would imagine myself as some like heroine in one of the books I read about. So I think, you know, having that um, means of escape and to envision yourself in a new way would, would give her some of these other items that we're, that are intangible. So I guess this is a tangible item to inspire intangible qualities. Wow, that's beautiful. Uh... Madhuri? Uh, yeah, like it's already been pointed out, I think I would just uh, do my best to keep reassuring her uh, because she can't change what has happened. Uh, I mean, her past is still a part of her. It's definitely going to stay within her. And while she works on healing, while she works on her healing, uh, I think she needs a lot of reassurance from time to time. So uh, I think that's what I would give. Thank you, Madhuriya. Who else is there? Aditya. Yes. Can we come back to you, Arik? And who? Uh, one more thing I like to say, Bombay, having yeah. served in, uh, in the tribal areas, one of the things that I've seen, a tribal society is a very close-knit society, and to penetrate its society and to is very, very difficult. So for me, the way that I look at it and what I want to give to Mary is should should be there in the same situation where she's there or to take her out of that particular situation or from that particular environment that she's in. So uh, and and with the type of trauma that she's facing and with the type of incom and the incompatibilities which she might be having out there, 
uh, what thing I can do for her, the word I like to give is, can I give her something that you can take her out from the situation and get her into some a different type of an environment, a different type of a place. That is what I would like to give to her. I also okay. think that tribal societies, like uh, Prakash said, that they are close to nature. So maybe a pebble or a stone which she can hold in her hand, uh, you know, that symbolizes that strength that she needs. Every time she goes through something traumatic to hold on and to, you know, clutch. Yeah. Okay. I think they're asking us to uh, return. That, uh, we still have a few seconds, so if Eric or Aditya have anything to add. Yeah, anyone else like to add something? I don't know, I'm, I'm thinking about how to create a, a safe space or, or an address that, that people in a trauma situation can uh, can address and know that that they are there for them. I'm not sure what kind of uh, address is it, but it needs to be something like that. Could yeah. it be like a tree? You know, you go and talk to a tree because when I am upset, there's a favorite park that I go and I walk in. Welcome back, everyone. How are we all doing? We got Jackie and Verena somewhere. Ah, okay, we can yeah. unmute us. <laughs> um, I think every session we have, if we had three breakout rooms, we have speakers from each of the session that might briefly share uh, what they have discussed and how they found um, the discussion. We have Kamayani. We have uh, breakout room numbers or it's like anybody yeah. who's one, two, anybody three? Or... Yeah. Well, anybody that unmute first is the first one to go. <laughs> okay. Okay, guys, so we uh, we had a very interesting exercise and everybody contributed. So we had people taking the roles of the neighbor. So we had Kyla saying she is going to be Mary's neighbor and she's going to provide her with solace, right? That if she does not have any room in her house or she's not allowed to stay there, she would give her own house you know so the shelter issue is for mary is solved there right then we had uh, elaine who were, who was also the grandmother and uh, she felt that the mary should definitely be felt that she belongs to this community you know she is here and she should not feel that she i mean she should not be afraid of anything to happen to her uh, then we had a very interesting friend who is going to uh, make her uh, join the football committee and we are going to, I mean, she's going to play, play football with them and also sort of form a camaraderie and, you know, not to feel alone as such and she's going to have uh, a lot of friends as well. And we also had Jackie as the uncle uh, in the community and I feel this uncle is also like a tribal leader who's like giving all the, you know, uh, 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 all the assurance, reassurance to Mary that she is going to be fine and she should, she should feel uh, protected. Yeah. And then we had our beautiful Elaine giving her food as well, which, I mean, whatever she wants. And she would provide food to her so that, you know, she feels, I mean, we have right to food, right to shelter, love all covered. <laughs> And then I, I will carry the empowerment and I will be her lawyer to see to that this law of sorcery, I mean, there is a law against that and, and uh, the victims, I mean, again, such a case does not happen, which happened with Mary. 
so guys uh, did i miss out anything please add uh, people from my group please add no. about anything no you you captured it great thank okay. you thanks thanks <laughs> thank you so much can we hear from another group Okay, from from our group. Uh, okay, uh, the members uh, strongly feel that uh, Mary Mary needs uh, healing, and in order for her to go through the process of uh, healing, healing, uh, she needs a uh, safe place and a safe uh, environment where the safe environment and space will be surrounded by people who will encourage and give her the confidence uh, she needed to move on and have a uh, hope for a uh, self a future and what she wants to do and then uh, something to remind her of the community's assurance by giving her a book that talks about strong uh, female characteristics so she can read or a stone, a pebble to hold on and remind her of her strength to move on. Yeah. Yeah, such richness. <clears throat> Did we, we have, have a one more team? Yeah, I think. If yeah. If the other team would like to share, it's up to yeah. you. If yep, they're ahead. coming. Okay, great. Yeah. yeah. Uh, from our group, uh, from our discussion, our group uh, uh, saw that Mary uh, will be needing help. Uh, at the time, uh, she will be uh, needing physical and uh, psychologically help. Uh, she was traumatized when she goes through uh, the the problem that her mother and sister faced. Um, Mary is uh, needing uh, help, like uh, the com uh, the family, uh, the group discussed that uh, we should be uh, cl close to her, talking to her, uh, not to take uh, the problem as uh, for herself. And, uh, and then a company uh, bring her to uh, uh, some activity like sports activity so that uh, he can, uh, she can forget about the problems uh, she's going through. And also uh, bringing her to uh, like other uh, service uh, that is provided like uh, uh, support mechanisms. Like in Australia, they have uh, uh, big sisters and small sisters program where she can uh, benefit from uh, that program uh, so that uh, she can uh, she can feel that she's not alone, but she's, uh, there's somebody uh, care for her and concerned about her and all this. And we've come up with this. Uh, if I forgot some, Ellis can help me or my group members can, uh, yeah, say something about yeah. our discussion. Uh, to add on from what uh, my colleague Umba had said, uh, they also came up and uh, uh, gave uh, some feedback that uh, they wanted to give her more support and and also to go for medical checkup and yeah uh, yeah and others we left out so I think that's it from us from our group great if anyone from our group want to say if something we yeah, not uh, putting a list it up there. Yeah. <clears throat> or anyone else from any other group that feel that we have missed anything? Good. Otherwise, thank you everyone. Thank you to the facilitators yeah. for the discussion. And I had mentioned in our group that we work usually in a specific context and a specific cultural context. And it's been very interesting to, to do this uh, with people from around the globe. So really appreciate everyone sharing. Um, Jackie? Yeah, I just, one of the, I'm always so moved by this because it always, 
thinks about like other people offer also the different places but it is also such a reflection of the context where people come from and you draw from that and there is so because of the way that the narrative strikes a chord with people, that empathy, there are always these various different things that we can learn from. And so it is always a collection of the different experiences, but the different collective spaces as well, too. And there is hope. And in that metaphor of the bilum, it provides a space where people can also give hope to Mary for the ways that they can go to, but that she is not alone. And that always resonates with people because sometimes we never know the backstory of the person, but at least that in itself and the various different um, conversations and thoughts offers that for them. And that's always a good thing about this, this particular exercise. And in terms of moving it forward as well, too, it's, um, it, it does not invade a person's space, but you have the option of doing that if you want to or not. And so I think that this and the collective knowledge that has come through with it is great. So thank you again, everybody, for doing that. <coughs> great, so we move to the next slide. Thank you, Tifa. Uh, you will have one more typing activity coming up soon. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so we wanted to use these exercises and we hope that, um, you know, what we want to bring across is that these are processes developed from trauma because they're looking at characters, they're looking at scenarios, and perhaps these are transferable activities that you could use as well, or perhaps you have already used some of these yeah. activities. And, and so just to, before we go to the last collective activity, just to re-emphasize, when we did the role on the wall figure, it was really about understanding the context and exploring the relationship and starting to build a sense of empathy and and connection, but also to highlight the contrast. It was very much looking at the individual's feelings. And then from there, we can map context because we are drawing on, collect on collective knowledge um, while at the same time talking about the scenario. And then we had the Billum exercise, which Jackie was very much about hope and the support mechanisms we can create, right? Yeah, yeah. And usually you lose that because I mean, with Mary's story, that's very real in Papua New Guinea, and then perhaps with other, within other contexts as well, too, is that you're so living in these um, situations where you never think that there is any way to move out of the space. And so these different scenarios, one, it offers you an alternative way to do things or to see things, but also an alternative future that you might have after that. But to think that you are never and not alone. And so those are the kinds of things that we weave into these activities, is that creation of hope, that through the, the path way of empathy and understanding that there is a future, that there is something that we can do. It might not happen now, it might not happen tomorrow, but at least as a collective community, we can find a way because we value humanity, we value human beings, yeah. And throughout it all as well too, one thing that did come up as well too, and during the exercise, was identifying the solutions and the existing um, networks. And this might be like a given, oh, we all know this one, but sometimes people don't know where those networks are. But in terms of working within communities and understanding context, a sort of mapping the context is also important. And people have the dearth of knowledge, I mean, an, an, an immense amount of knowledge that we can tap into. And these are the certain ways that you can unlock that to find the various support mechanisms from within the community, but also outside. And then within that as well too, is about collective consciousness. The idea that we are linked, the idea that we can do something, the idea that we have this common thread, this common thing that we want to do, and it inspires that in people. And so through the conversations and the activities, you bring out these various different perspectives and you bring them out and then you have a conversation with people around that one. And suddenly it might hit them, some, some might not like it, some do, but at least you started them thinking about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Could I add something to that, Jackie? Yes, briefly. I think Briefly, yeah. I think <laughs> I think um, we using story in the process drama, like using Mary's story, is a safe way for people, and we've seen it today, for people to find uh, find things in those stories that speak to their own experiences and bring people to think about their own experiences, their own stories, to find empathy that way through it as well. And that's why I, what I love about it so much, using story, is because people find find use this story, their Mary story, as a way to find solutions for their own stories in their own places and I think that's really powerful and so thank you for everyone who shared their own stories because that shows how these process drama using story actually can help to invoke that change and apply help people apply that to their own contexts yeah thanks Kayla. yeah great thank you Kayla so um 
we have one more final activity and one of the key things in our workshops that we try to do is always that we try to produce something together as a group so that we can take something home with us that we are all part of. And that has been proven also quite powerful. Now, let's see, this is an experiment. Um, without our annotated function working, um, we have to do it in steps. And thank you, Tifa. Uh, sorry, another typing activity for you. So um, we might use, in, in, if we have a room and we have the physical environment, we might um, do role plays and we have more time and all sorts. So, but for today, um, to try to do something quickly that we can all contribute to, we thought we could do a collective poem. So we'll go to the next slide. Um, and this requires really everyone just to write one line. And I had thought that we could all share a line and put that into the structure that we provided, but we're gonna have to do it linear. So we have to start at the top. So you can share a line about experiencing hurt or making a change or a line hope for the future. You can also contribute a line for each of those. But the idea is now that you are not now, now moving into the character of Mary and you are now talking about um, the experience, you're talking about making a change and your hopes for the future. Now, this can just be a word, it can be two words, three words, a sentence, anything. And we will just put it together. So we're going to use the chat function again. And we, I will just start by saying, we will start with the sentences or words around experiencing hurt. And then uh, we will wait a little bit and I will let you know when we move to the next section. Mm -hmm. So that way we know where the words and the sentences go. Once we are finished, I will ask Jackie mm -hmm. to read the poem out for us. <laughs> and then that will be the end of our session <laughs> with some reflections, I think. Yeah. So um, let's see how we go. So we will start with experiencing hurt. Um, and remember, you are Mary now. Please use the chat function. Yes. So when you're ready, after some thoughts, into the chat function. Yep. Good. <coughs> and and um, Tifa, we will ask you to copy that over. And if it's too fast, then we can <laughs> read it from the chat later. Yeah. 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 Okay, thank you so much for sharing. We're going to move it forward. Now we're going to start to see change. Either you make a decision for change, you are experiencing change, perhaps someone is helping you. And now we're writing about change.
to the next. Mm -hmm. Okay, and now we want to hear your hopes for your future. You are Mary, and what are you hoping for the future? And you have seen Mary's story as well, and her how she has engaged in the future. Thank you so much. Please continue typing. In the interest of time, we will start reading the poem now. Remember, this is our collective poem. Jackie, are you ready? <laughs> I see. <clears throat> or would you like to appoint someone? <laughs> Does anybody want to read the poem? I'm very happy to have other people read the poem as well. <clears throat> But we have to have someone read it. Yes. As a... Would anybody like to read it? And we will be reading from the chat. Uh, just so um, we'll get kept recapture everything, but I hope that we will have the full slides as well by the end. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I can share it as well. Um, three. There are three sections, so I can read the first section. Somebody can read the second section, and somebody read the last session. How does that sound as a compromise? Great. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Maybe Kamayani wants to be part of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Kayla, would you like to be part of it? Cool. Great. Yes. Kamayani, which one do you want to read? Do you want to read the first, the second, or the third? The third. The third. Right. <laughs> Kayla, which one do you like? The second. I'll read second. No problem. The chat. I'll, yeah. I'll, Yeah, I'll be the first one then. And to all, please keep writing and thank you so much for contributing. <clears throat> I didn't get to say goodbye. I feel scared and betrayed. I endured blow after blow. Hurt has made me more resilient. I'm wandering around in the dark with no hope in sight. I am alone. Being always blamed for the things out of my hand. I don't know what I did wrong to deserve this. Hurt has made me mentally strong. Why am I entangled in this cobweb? I follow the path of strong women before me. Emptiness in her life, loneliness. It's not fair. My mother is innocent. She only wants the best for me. I am walking towards the future, not knowing what's in store. To change is hard, but a necessity. I will hold your hand. I am brave. I am strong. I don't understand everything right now. I want life to be meaningful. I miss my mother. I love my mother. Please bring her back to me. I hope that tomorrow will be easier. I'm strong. I will see to it no one suffers like me and no mother has to run away. I want change. I am the change. I will change and can change. I will find my mother and take her out from her loneliness. I will be strong. Peace and hope will guide me. Bravo. Thank you so much, everybody. <clears throat> that was beautiful. So perhaps take a moment to just let that seep through and also the activity, and then we'll bring us out of the space. Thank you. <laughs> Did you want to add, Rina? We did have a final slide, but there's not really a lot of things <laughs> we can say after this. No. Uh, no. Other than I hope that the processes that we've shared um, gave some ideas about how we can look at, how we can map relationships, how we can use character-based understanding to uh, identify solutions and how we build, can build collective to create hope through creative ways. Yeah, and I think also that 
I think one of the important things is to facilitate the conversations, but to get people to be part uh, of it. And I, this is very new to us, this interactive space, because we're always very much in person doing this. And so first, you know, to thank you all for your contribution and also your participation and patience throughout this process. But that also what has happened to uh, within this collective space that we've had, we've come up with something and something that dis uh, talks about hope and always when we try to do these workshops we always try to make sure that we bring people out of the space out of all of that into something that can bring light and that can bring hope and that there is a future towards that one and so and that's a very much a very much a, a, um, an important kind of pedagogy when we're doing these workshops is that each of the uh, each of the conventions each of the exercises always takes us through a process the process of experiencing the process of exploring the process of understanding context but also bringing us to the process of actually seeing the future and what the possibilities are for that future. So thank you very much everybody um, for your participation and for being part of this workshop. Yeah. Elaine, I think I give it back to you now. Well, Verena, did you have something to say? No, no, no. that's it from us. Yeah. yeah. And, and I want to thank also the facilitators uh, that were part of this team. Thank you so much for facilitating the group sessions and also um, saying yes to being part of this team. So thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much, everyone. Yeah. We go back to Elaine or Elsa? Uh, yeah. Elsa or Elaine, we go back to you both. We'll hand back to you. Thank you, Jackie and Marina and the facilitators for taking us through that. It was very beautiful and it was very, it was very interesting to see how you um, managed to use this kind of role play to deal with something so deep and so personal. So I enjoyed that. Thank you. Uh, for those who are still on, I asked that if you could fill out the, there's a two, three minute, two minute survey. It's actually very brief. For the sake of the facilitators and our moderators, if you could give some helpful feedback as well as for us, for the future of topics you'd like to be in, uh, us to note uh, in the form. Also feel free to follow us on our Facebook page because we have uh, many webinars coming up our webinar next month is on September 20th, starting roughly the same time. Uh, it's uh, one of our many uh, things that we are putting on in uh, for the International Day of uh, Peace. It's not necessarily all on the day itself. We are expecting to put on a peace meal as well as uh, a, a very special session with the, some survivors of the nuclear, uh, the bomb in Nagasaki. So that is around six people in their late 80s and 90s who feel the need to share before they go their experiences of, uh, ex uh, of the atomic bomb and uh, life after that. This is a very, very special session. Some of them have been spending a lot of time and energy to learn English as well because they want to be able to convey these stories to a broader audience. But uh, because of their age, it's not accessible to everyone around the world but uh, so we're very lucky because uh, we're in the right time zone but do join us for that time uh, that session it's a very very unique and special opportunity we'll be posting that on our facebook page with more details otherwise um, you can note your email in the survey so thank you for joining us and do join us for future future sessions thank you yeah. yeah, so thank you. Can I just say something? I, I would like to thank Jackie, Verna, Alain, everybody, felicitators. I mean, it was a really rocking workshop. I feel in such a small time to do so much, but I had a suggestion. You know, it was not enough time. Would it be possible for you to share the emails of the people who have attended so we can sort of, you know, maintain a rapport and a connection and maybe, you know, uh, you know, we don't know who will connect with whom, but uh, and this this poem, we would please like to have this full poem with us. So either, I mean, if you can share with all the participants the yeah. email address yeah. of everybody so we can connect with them, that would be really helpful. <laughs> I'm just um, sharing the yeah, so quick version of that poem now. Is that okay? Yes. So I we can will share a very uh, quick version of the poem now. Poem. There. That so we'll share quick. this on our Facebook page as well as the webinar. So you can uh, re watch this again. Uh, in terms of um, the email details, we are not. Uh, 
permitted to release things onto you unless people expressly notes okay. note to that effect. So if you wish for that to happen, please uh, note in the survey and we will collate all the emails and send it out to the group who would like to stay connected. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, thanks. Thanks, Celine, for that, yeah. Mm -hmm. So thank you and uh, come join us for the future sessions. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much, and we hope to stay connected with everyone. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Thank everyone. You for sharing. <clears throat> Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Bye. Bye, Bye everyone. Bye. Stay Bye. well. Stay safe. Bye. Thank Bye. Thank you. Stay safe and healthy. Bye. Thank you. Bye. The facilitators and uh, Jackie and Marina, if you'd like to stay on for like a, a few minutes. Once everyone's left, we'll just have a quick debrief. This was such a great uh, session. <laughs> Jackie is back. Yep. I think we're still waiting for a few people. I mean, to put together the poem, I was wondering, you know, like how it's going to work out, but it was pretty good. Oh, mm. <laughs> oh, okay, you're still there. Hi. We How usually, are you? We usually um, we'll have a notepad and everyone writes a line so you see what everyone previously wrote. And yeah, I mean, it was the first time we've done it online. So yeah, I think with the structure, giving a structure is important. And then, um, mm -hmm. yeah, it's great. Yeah. Yeah, so I took the whole page uh, section, <laughs> please. Yeah. <laughs> I well, took I took I took screenshots of um the chats. So if we've missed any of what was said in the chat, we can put um, it in the poem. I, but I'm not sure. I can also. I've got it all. I just um uploaded that link to the poem already. So oh, cool. it's in the chat. There's a copy of it. I collated it and just stripped out all the names. So you should nice. be able to see it there. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Tifa. Yeah. Hey. I'll say, like, thank you for the invitation. It has been a joy because it's great. We've never actually had to do this online. So this was, you know, it was, oh, how do we do this? But so that has been great. Yeah. 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 It, it's, it's quite a challenge, isn't it? Putting everything like this mm -hmm. that's so embodied in a disembodied uh, forum, yeah. right? So that's <laughs> great. You guys. It, yeah. Um, it feels sort of like jarring because usually you can you can be in the space with people. So even if it's quiet, you can, you're still in the space, but yeah. this is the yeah. quiet, like the, the getting comfortable with the, the quiet of it and not being able to see the people. That's, that's very interesting to know because I didn't know I was going to feel that way. <laughs> mm. It's good. I think, yeah, I, I feel like yeah. <laughs> the one thing that I think might be apparent from all these people sharing their Gmails is maybe five minutes in the session where they can have like a, a quick drink. Like that's what's missing from most online conferences is the chance to chat to people after the fact and, and mm. swap details and things. So maybe a scheduled five minute conference, like just a, you know, it's, it's, it's the leaving in the foyer moment that nobody has. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm. Trying to build that. Cause that's so important as well. Those little conversations that happen, even in um, yeah. process drama, the, the, the debriefs between participants and the little moments, they're very, they're very powerful. So. That's a great pickup. That's awesome. Tifa, could I get you to put that in the survey so that we don't lose that uh, suggestion? Yeah. I can try. If I remember where the survey was, I wasn't paying attention. I was too busy collating a poem. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm> so <laughs> <bad to> do. <laughs> but Tifa, you are amazing because you just like very agilely just put together things and, you know, made it seem seamless. Um, that was amazing. And thank you so much. Uh, the annotate function was disabled because we, when we do workshops, we have a lot of people playing because they're young people. They like to play around yeah. and then they mm -hmm. start scribbling and it gets very distracting. So my tech person. Uh, we wanted them to. We wanted them to scribble. <laughs> yeah, this is a different, uh, <laughs> different uh, group that wants the scribbling. Mm -hmm. 